Hello, welcome back to another video with the Transfer Portal CFB presented by No Contact CFB. We've got another player interview today, and we are thrilled to have one of the best, the nastiest, one of the most fun offensive linemen in all of college football, North Dakota State Bison. Cody Malk, how are you doing? I'm doing really well today. How are you guys doing? We're doing real well. Glad to have Andrewster with us as well, but we're not out on the golf course today like you. We're kind of jealous of that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We had a tee time scheduled for 440, so we're uh, now we're just getting started on hold two here, so I'll sit out for a little bit. All right, we'll make sure to get you back to the golf shortly, <laughs> and, and we'll start this interview off right quick with your recruiting process because I know that you were super under recruited like 24 7 in ESPN don't even have recruiting profiles for you I want to know what advice do you have for future high school recruits who are just so under the radar and feel like am I ever going to get that offer what advice do you have for them yeah I think the biggest thing is just like not to get discouraged because I mean I was from a really small school I'm sure that like there's talent everywhere. Usually, you know, if you can play, if you can play, they'll find you. But uh, I think the biggest thing is just getting to camps and, and not like letting, you know, your small school deter you from like still working hard, lifting weights, you know, all that. Because um, if you do that on top of going to camps, that's I mean, that's how you get noticed. You talked about small school and I, I don't I can't remember if you're talking about your high school, your college because NDSU is not a small school in fact I've been to Fargo many times Fargo is amazing it's such a fun place to visit Fargo is a college town's college town for the people that are unaware of the great city explain to them what the vibe is in Fargo compared to the other college towns that you visited yeah I think the biggest thing with Fargo is it's just like I mean it is a college town because the community like everyone's just so wrapped around and involved in like all of NDSU athletics it doesn't just mean football it's it's basketball, baseball, you know, everything that we have, like the community is just so involved, which, I mean, any NDSU athlete can go to a place and people will recognize them, which is which is what makes it such a great, you know, college town. That's sick. And I want to go back to like growing up. Cause I knew you grew up on a farm. You were one of eight kids. How much competition was there when you were growing up and how did that lifestyle help prepare you for the football field and kind of mold you into the man that you are today? Yeah. I mean, like you said, I'm from a huge family. So uh, um, I have a brother who's like a year and a half older than me that we were competing all the time. I mean, You know, I was never as good as him because he was, you know, a little bit older than me, but I was able to hang around with his friends and, um, you know, be able to play basketball, go out and just do everything with them. So that that, that really pushed me because I'm a competitive guy. So, like, I I, I mean, I wanted to compete with them. But that's probably a lot of where my, you know, competitiveness started was just I was trying to one-up him. And uh, he's a a good role model, good good person to look up to. He's a good guy. So I – it didn't matter. I still wanted to kick his butt and everything we did, though. Yeah, those sibling rivalries are always something. But one one way that they actually help you is, you know, you get a little bit more physical, which is very helpful in the trenches. Trenches are a very physical area. As you need to, you know, be able to have that physical, you also need to have the, you know, the mental side. How do you find that perfect balance between just being an absolute mauler, just wanting to destroy everybody, but also know, like, you need to play a smart game? Yeah, I mean, I think no matter who you are, it doesn't matter what, like, play style or the type of player you are. Everyone's got to be in the film room and study and not only studying the people you're playing against, but always just kind of reviewing your own technique. So anyone who can do that's going to already be that much better of a player. But then just on top of it, finding kind of what, like, what type of player you are and just really kind of embracing it. And, and uh, you know, not everyone's just, like the most physical offensive lineman ever. There's some athletic guys and there's some guys who literally just win based off their smarts. So um, I think pairing up your, your film study and your just football smarts with whatever your strength is on the field is, is huge. And in high school, you were a star tight end and defensive end. Maybe you played some other positions that I'm unaware of, but I want to know when that transition to becoming that nasty offensive lineman really began and what were your first thoughts when you were tasked with having this new career in the trenches. Yeah, it was, it wasn't until maybe my, the end of my first year, maybe second year where um, I was told that I might be switching over to the O-line. And 
I, a little right away. I'm like, oh, I'm never going to get to touch the ball. You know, it's like it, it, it was a little bit it was a little weird right away, I guess. But I really embraced it. And there's a great group of guys in there, too, that just made it so much easier. So, um, uh, yeah, I, I, it, it was it was a little bit of a shock right away. But I'm I'm completely happy with it. Who were some coaches that really helped that transition to the offensive line? And were there any players that you either watched or studied to try to not really replicate their game, but like take these little bits and be like, you know, this guy does this really well. Maybe I can add this to my game. Yeah, for sure. There's, uh, I mean, our, our offensive coordinator now, now he's our offensive coordinator, but at the time he's our tight ends coach. So I was just leaving his room. Uh, coach Roll has, uh, I mean, he's one of my favorite guys ever. He's, he helped me a really, really well with that transition. And, um, you know, line coaches and stuff along the way, like they all help too. But there are some players, guys like Cordell Volson. He was only a year older than me. You know, he was a, I guess, a sophomore at the time. But he was, he, he's maybe one of the best leaders even back then. Um, I, I tried to take a lot from him, and he's an awesome football player. So even then, at a young age, or when he was a, a young guy, still trying to kind of replicate him, and not only just football, but the way he just lives life and goes about like the way we run the program. So you speak to Volson there. Is he like the biggest influence on your career thus far? Is it someone else? Um, and what's the best piece of advice that you've been given? Yeah, I think um, I'd say either Cordell or Coach Roll are probably my biggest influences. He's just he's one of my best friends, but also he's just the way he lives and plays the game is just it's so admirable. But, uh, I mean, like Coach Roll, I think the best piece of uh, advice he ever gave any of us is just uh, – I've said it before, just be where your feet are. It's, um, you know, everything you're doing in life, you gotta, especially in football, you got to be intentional with it. And that's a piece of information that I heard when I was 18, and it still sticks with me five, six years later. You talked a lot about coaching so far, and I wanted to ask – do you think that could be possibly one of the biggest reasons that NDSU has found so much success? I mean, they're a dynasty at this point. They have been dominating for years upon years. Yeah, I think that really is a huge part of success. Not only just our, you know, football coaches, but I think the biggest part is our strength coach, Coach Kramer, the best in the country. And, and you know, you spend more time with him than you do with anyone else. So um, not only is he molding us into be good people or, or good football players, but just good people in general too. And, um, but the coaches, the football coaches, it's the way they run stuff. I mean, they just instill in us. I mean, we're we're a pretty player-driven program. So, you know, they instill in us early how important it is to do all the little things right. And then once you instill that into those people, the vets start instilling it into the rookies. And so it all com comes back to the coaches just kind of hammering down on that point. And the little things are super important. One of those things is finding an edge in the film room. When you're watching film, what's <laughs> that first thing that you're looking for that's something you could exploit in the upcoming game? Uh, yeah, I think the biggest thing with me is just, um, you know, after I do all my own film review on myself in the prior week, I'll look at next week's opponent. And it's just trying to find uh, trying to find little things right away, just uh, – if there's maybe a little giveaway or a tell in their stance, you know, oh, hey, when, you know, this puts back or something, maybe they're going to do this move. It's just, it's just little stuff like that, trying to find tells that have uh, helped me prepare pretty well for game day. So would you attribute that type of film study to the reason you've been so consistent over the last two seasons? Yeah, for sure. I don't think you can be a I don't think you can play college football at a high level if you don't dedicate yourself in the film room. I mean, you know, any athlete can – you can't just stick – I don't think you can stick any just random athlete or football player out there. You have to You have to really, you know, want to get better, want to learn stuff about the game, and really just dive into the film room. Now, you've been a part of four national championship teams with a chance at a fifth. First off, congrats on that now, success. That's outrageous to think about and we do hope that you get that chance out of fifth i'm sure you will ndsu is absurd but the work on the offensive line never goes unnoticed your personality radiates throughout all of fargo when your illustrious career as a member of the bison comes to a close what do you want the fans to remember your legacy for i think they, i just want to be remembered for uh a guy who's just kind of always living in the moment that's my biggest I think attribute is I just I try to stay loose with everything always. You know, if it's a 
it's a long day of camp, a little tough practice or something, just trying to just keep things light, make a joke here or there. And, uh, you know, the biggest thing that I think any player should want when their career is done is just to try to leave the place better than when they found it. So, you know, just doing the little things for four or five years can add up and just leaving an impact on the people behind you too. Would you say that there's a specific artist or genre of music that you kind of purposefully listen to right before a game just to kind of get yourself in that right mindset? Yeah, I, I'm actually a little bit different in that aspect. I don't, I don't really ever listen to pregame music. I, uh, I just, uh, one of it's weird, but one of my you know pregame things that I do is I just, I just sit there, no music, and I just kind of watch and just listen to everyone else the way they go about things. You know, some guys have the music really loud through their headphones, and I'll just kind of hear that, or I'll just see people kind of doing their thing, and then you know, just right before a game, my last thing is I'll just kind of you know sit down, put my head in my lap, and just kind of envision the plays that I'm going to run. You know, I know whatever plays you know, the openers we have, or if it's a third down pressure, I'm expecting just, just a little stuff like that is where I like, I just try to envision that, but yeah, I don't, I don't really listen to a whole lot of pregame music. If I did, I would listen to like some type of eighties rock um, type music. Now off the field, how do you plan on giving back to the community and helping out those in need, whether it be this season or in the near future, a few years down the road? Yeah, one thing that our program does great is we are huge in community service. I mean, whether it's um, going to volunteer at like a, say, a Special Olympics or something like that. But also, I mean, all the time we have opportunities to go into elementary schools and, and read to them and just kind of hang out with them. And, and that's that's something that we all really enjoy doing because the kids absolutely love it. But, you know, we probably love it even more. It's, it's fun to just go and uh, just enjoy your time and try to give back a little bit. And you can just see, you know, when you're reading a book or you're playing a, a gym class game with the kids, dodgeball or something, you can just see the joy in their faces. It just, it, it really, it, I mean, it makes me happy. And, and, you know, in the future, I'd like to, I'd like to kind of keep doing the same thing just in, in any way that I can give back, especially to the younger generations is where I'm going to, I'm going to try to give back. I want to talk about one of the best rivalries in college football for a second. You guys versus South Dakota State. It, one of my favorite rivalries in general. Tell us what that matchup means for not only those two programs, but the cities and states they represent. Yeah, no, there's a huge rivalry there and it's been there forever. It's just, I mean, it's, I think the biggest thing to start is it's two really good football teams. It's, it's every other year. I mean, if you don't bring your A game, you could get beat and it doesn't matter if someone's let's say having a down year, like people just get so much more ramped up for, for that matchup. And you know, the, 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 this, I almost think the rivalry is bigger between the fan, the two fan bases than it is the teams because the fans just get so into it. And the city's just, you know, the city's just kind of the, the fan, they go back and forth and it's just kind of, I mean, it's, it seems like it's almost a bigger rival, rivalry there, but um, it, it's always good. It's always a good game with them. There's a lot of respect between the two programs. We talked to uh, Tucker Kraft, who's a tight end at South Dakota State yesterday, and he could not stop talking about how much respect he has for NDS. He hates your program, but a tremendous amount of respect shared from him, and I'm sure that goes both ways. No, we'll get. Yeah, no, it absolutely does. It, 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 like, oh, sorry, I sorry. lost connection there for a sec. Didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, you're good. You go ahead. I was just going to say, yeah, I mean, it's the, the players just have so much respect for each other. It's not even really as I think it is. It's, I mean, on the field, you're going to, everyone's trying to do their job, but off the field, I mean, we, we have so, so much respect for them and like how their program has uh, come along. And I mean, it's, like I said, it's always a good game with them. And yeah, we just have the most respect for them as well. Now we'll go to pick six here to close things out. More rapid fire questions since aren't also football based what's your favorite food and what's your least favorite food um i would say my favorite food is uh you say type of pasta probably just uh pasta some like alfredo sauce and shrimp and chicken or something that's uh, that's where i usually I, I like that a lot and i'd say my least favorite food is um you know maybe not a food but it's a little weird i'm not i hate ketchup i hate ketchup i just I don't understand it. It just smells terrible and it tastes terrible. I just, I'm not, I'm not big on it. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's where I'll agree with you. Uh, do you have a favorite TV show? 
Yeah, I would say I, I do. I, I really enjoy watching um, like The Sopranos. I would say that's probably one of my favorites. And, and Breaking Bad is just such a rewatchable show. How did you lose your two front teeth? Great question. <laughs> I uh, it was in a, it was a seventh grade basketball game. Uh, I was diving for a loose ball. And so was one of my teammates. And he kind of dove head first. And I went kind of face first and just kind of ran into each other. And um you know, blood everywhere and then I had to go to the ER and they pulled the teeth out and uh ever since then I mean the all I want for Christmas is my two front teeth jokes have just not stopped coming of course yeah who would you say is the funniest player on the team I would say the funniest player okay is there's just see there's different types of humor the humor that just cracks me up the most it's <laughs> I hate to say it because I don't want him to hear this, but my roommate, Jake Cava, is at the end. It's just – his humor is just hilarious to me. It's just like most people don't find it funny, but I am just sitting there dying. I don't know why. How about possibly a hidden talent you have that nobody really knows about? Yeah, I'd say my hidden talent is uh, disc golf. We, we started doing that last year. And, uh, you know, there's a couple courses in Fargo, and we do it. In the summer, we do it probably three, four times a week. I mean, just go out and rip 18 holes in, in an hour. And uh, we've gotten, gotten pretty good at that lately. And finally, you have a chance to build your dream offensive line. You can pick anybody in football history to play on the mouth line. Who are your starting five? Okay. I'm going to go a little bit, maybe a little bit more recent. I don't have too much knowledge of, like, you know, the greats of NFL history. But I'm going to take – I think I'll go uh, – I'll go Joe Thomas. I'll take Zach Martin. I'm just saying any position here. Um, I'll go uh, – I think I'll take Lane Johnson. I'll go um, – oh, shoot. You know, I'm going to do something weird here. I'm going to throw Trent Williams in at guard, I think. You know, between him, Joe Thomas, and Lane Johnson, one of them can play guard. And then center. Yeah, I – Yeah, maybe a guy like Jason Kelsey just abs- – I mean, he's, a, he's an athletic freak. It's a dominant offensive line right there, but it's missing you. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess uh, I guess I can be thrown in there somewhere too. Sorry, I didn't, didn't hear that part. No, of you're good. You're good. <laughs> Get you in there on uh, as a swing tackle on uh, a tight hey. end spot. <laughs> that works perfect. <laughs> Y'all are going to destroy everybody in the run game. It won't be very oh, fair. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, um, are we going to see a leg dab from you this season? I know Lipke's done a, a, a good bit. Can we see that from you? Yeah, I've been uh, I've been working on my flexibility just to be able to uh, try to do that. But you no, know, all uh, if it comes if it comes in the spur of the moment, maybe we'll see something like that. All right, all right. Um, thank you so much for doing this, and we'll end this with what are some goals you have for this season, whether it be for yourself or the team. Yeah, I think some goals to start is just for us. It's to start winning a conference championship. It's always our first goal. And then on top of that, I mean, every year our goal is to win a national championship as well. And, you know, maybe a personal goal for myself is I, I just my, – my goal is to be the top lineman in FCS football. I think uh, from there, you know, it's a good spot to be. And I, I think it's, a, I think it's a, a good goal to set to push myself. It's a super bright future that you have. We can't wait to see what you do this season and beyond. I know in a few years we're going to see you crushing it in the NFL. It's going to be great to see that big ginger on the offensive line putting on for the rest of us. And, yeah, I mean, we really appreciate you doing this interview. Had really fun speaking with you. I hope everyone listening enjoyed this. And make sure to follow Cody on Twitter. We'll have his Twitter on this video and make sure to like and subscribe to our channel. And yeah, we thank you all so much. We'll see you on the next one.